Hi, my name is Paul Hogerforst. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the University of Minnesota and I'm the inventor of the answer clavicle The goal of today's video is to discuss the design rationale, the answer clavicle pin itself, the instrument set, and surgical technique. The answer clavicle pin is an intramedullary fixation device intended to treat mid-shaft clavicle fractures. The goal of the answer clavicle pin is to realign and to restore the native length and alignment of the fractured mid-shaft clavicle in a minimally invasive manner. Several surgical treatment options exist, however, these devices are also subject to a specific array of drawbacks and complications. The answer clavicle pin is thoughtfully designed to address these specific disadvantages therefore optimizing treatment for patients and surgeons. The answer clavicle pin is designed based on the premise that mid-shaft clavicle fractures do not need absolute stability for proper healing. The fractured clavicle needs to be realigned and kept at length until union via secondary bone healing occurs. Therefore, fixation on both sides of the fracture is required. The design is flexible to follow the contour of the clavicle during insertion and rigid to maintain reduction. The answer clavicle pin is intended as a one-size-fits-all device. During movement of the arm and shoulder the clavicle rotates around its longitudinal axis. When fractured, the fracture elements can rotate to a different extent or in opposite directions. To prevent friction on the bone implant interface, loosening of the implant or hardware failure, the answer lateral fixation device allows rotation around the answer clavicle pin while continuing to secure the optimal length. The torsional forces will dissipate within the implant implant interface. The design of the answer clavicle pin is simple, resulting in a straightforward procedure which takes less than 30 minutes. It is expected to reduce the need for hardware removal which in turn leads to a reduction in reoperations and associated morbidity. The patient is positioned so that proper exposure and access to the posterolateral lateral clavicle can be obtained. For example, the patient can be positioned in beach chair on Allen or shoulder table. Alternatively, the patient can be positioned on a regular or radiolucent table with a bump between the shoulder blades. Position and test the C-arm in two directions to make sure the entry point, fracture site, and SC joint can be visualized. Identify and mark of the anatomic landmarks including clavicle, AC joint, scapular spine, posterior conoid tubercle, acromion. The posterior conoid tubercle is often easily palpable. Then mark the location of the skin incision just posterior and lateral of this. Make a 2 to 3 cm incision through skin and subcutaneous tissue at the previously determined location. Direct the dissection medially towards the posterior conoid tubercle. Do not open the AC joint. Identify the fascia of the trapezius muscle and proceed to peel this off anteriorly and superiorly with for example a key elevator so that direct access to the posterior conoid tubercle is obtained. Place retractors superior and inferior of the posterior conoid tubercle to adequately visualize the appropriate entry point. Often a sen retractor superiorly and a small homan inferiorly work well. Place the drill and drill sleeve on the posterior conoid tubercle. The ideal entry point is at the equator or slightly below to reduce the chance of hardware irritation. Tip, palpate where the clavicle curves forward medially and stay lateral of this. Do not choose the entry point too lateral so the answer clavicle pin has to accommodate two bends. If needed the appropriate entry point can be verified by means of fluoroscopy in two directions. Once at the correct location drill through the first cortex and enter the medullary canal of the lateral fracture element. Start drilling perpendicular to the primary cortex and slowly adjust the angle of the drill towards the direction of the medullary canal. While keeping the tissue protector in place, remove the drill use this to place the answer clavicle pin through without losing the entry point. Next, advance the answer clavicle pin into the lateral fracture element. Check the position and direction of the answer clavicle pin inside the lateral fracture element by means of fluoroscopy in two directions. By hand adjust the direction of the answer clavicle pin based on the fluoroscopy images so it is aimed down the canal and check again. Place the universal pin driver on the 2.6 mm part of the pin closest to the 2.2 mm part of the pin. Tip: It is necessary to apply gentle collinear pressure to advance the answer clavicle pin. In some cases the canal is narrow and more pressure is needed. Make sure the direction is appropriate otherwise the chance of creating a false route exists. Use the universal powered pin driver to advance the answer clavicle pin until the fracture site is reached. Reduce the fracture elements and align them percutaneously using reduction clamps and reduction maneuvers. If closed reduction attempts are unsuccessful, make an accessory 2 to 3 cm incision over the fracture site. Do not use the answer clavicle pin as a lever or joystick during reduction. 
It may deform or break. Tip, consider closed reduction if the fracture has a simple pattern and the fracture is being addressed within three to four days after trauma. In all other cases, there is a low threshold to open the fracture site and reduce the fracture under direct visualization. This makes the reduction and procedure reliable, quick and safe. Little to no soft tissue stripping is necessary and research shows it does not negatively impact union rates. Lobster claws tend to be easiest to use during reduction. Advance the answer clavicle pin into medial fracture fragment and verify the position by means of fluoroscopy. Once across the fracture site switch to the answer manual pin driver to have tactile feedback on the amount of purchase. Manually advance the answer clavicle pin towards the SC joint. Optimal position is approximately 1 to 2 centimeters from the SC joint and when adequate purchase is obtained. The medial fixation is now established. Take note, the medial thread is designed to anchor itself against the anterior cortex of the medial fragment. Now the answer tap is used to prepare a functional thread in the cortex of the posterior conoid tubercle. This will facilitate placement of the answer lateral fixation device. On occasion it may be necessary to apply gentle collinear force onto the tap in order for it to engage the cortex. Use the cannulated answer lateral fixation device inserter to place the answer lateral fixation device over the answer clavicle pin. While advancing, the exterior thread will anchor itself in the cortex of the posterior conoid process creating the lateral fixation point. Make sure the six resilient legs of the answer lateral fixation device have positioned themselves in one of the indentations of the answer clavicle pin. Clear the implant from debris and or adjust the answer clavicle pin or answer lateral fixation device to position the answer lateral fixation device correctly. The marking on the resilient legs should line up with the indentation. Use the manual pin driver to adjust the position of the answer clavicle pin in relation to the answer lateral fixation device until proper positioning has been obtained. In case of incorrect positioning of the answer lateral fixation device it is not possible to place the answer end cap. Do not push with force as this can damage the legs on the answer lateral fixation device. Before securing the construct with the answer end cap, check the reduction of the fracture elements. If needed the length can still be adjusted. Approximate and reduce fracture elements in the setting of a comminuted fracture as best as possible to generate a good indication of the appropriate length. Tip, in case of a comminuted fracture a circlage suture with number 1 vicral or vicral tape can be considered to obtain and maintain bone apposition. If adjusted, make sure the resilient legs of the answer lateral fixation device are still placed in one of the indentations of the answer clavicle pin. When aligned and deemed at length, place the answer end cap using the answer end cap inserter. Advance the answer end cap until a click is felt and or heard. Tip, when the answer lateral fixation device is placed relatively deep into the lateral cortex, the answer end cap may be blocked by the cortex. In this case gently manipulate the answer end cap inserter until it clears the cortex and the end cap can be advanced. When the answer lateral fixation device is not placed deep enough it may result in suboptimal fixation and hardware prominence. Cut the answer clavicle pin to length flush to the answer end cap using a universal end or side cutting pin cutter. Obtain final fluoroscopy images of the position of the answer clavicle pin and fracture elements in two directions. Irrigate the surgical field. Close the trapezius insertion over the extracortical part of the answer clavicle pin to reduce the chance of hardware prominence. Close the incisions. Apply dressings and place the arm in a sling. Typical rehab recommendations include the arm in a sling for two weeks. Immediate hand, wrist, and elbow exercises. Start passive and active assisted exercises at two weeks. No lifting until six weeks. In case removal is required, open the posterior incision and open the fascia insertion of the trapezius muscle. Place retractor superior and inferior of the posterior conoid tubercle. Identify the answer end cap and remove using needle driver, pliers or forceps by pulling it away along the longitudinal axis from the answer lateral fixation device. Use the answer lateral fixation device inserter to back out and remove the answer lateral fixation device. Now the residual extracortical part of the answer clavicle pin should be exposed and visible. Use needle nose pliers or extraction pliers as used for removal of titanium elastic nails, vice grip, T-handle chuck or power universal pin driver to back out and remove the answer clavicle pin.
verify complete removal of hardware by means of fluoroscopy in two directions. Irrigate the surgical field and close the incisions. Apply dressings. The answer clavicle pin set is made up of three different parts. The answer clavicle pin, the answer lateral fixation device, and the answer end cap. The answer clavicle pin consists of a 2.2 mm flexible pin fabricated from a titanium aluminum vanadium alloy. It is flexible to follow the contour of the clavicle and rigid to maintain alignment. On the medial side, the answer clavicle pin has two distinct features. A blunt tip which helps prevent perforation when advancing it through the intramedullary canal of the clavicle as well as a threaded tip that anchors itself against the cortical bone in the medial fracture element creating the medial fixation point by friction. On the lateral side, the answer clavicle pin has a plurality of indentations which are used to determine the optimal and patient-specific length of the pin intraoperatively, making it a one-size-fits-all principle. The answer lateral fixation device consists of a threaded exterior and six resilient legs. The answer lateral fixation device anchors itself into the cortical bone of the lateral fracture element by means of the coarse thread, thereby creating the fixation point lateral of the fracture. Simultaneously, the resilient legs position themselves around the answer clavicle pin in one of the previously mentioned indentations. These allow the surgeon to adjust the optimal length of the fractured clavicle and pin intraoperatively. Once the optimal patient-specific length and alignment of the clavicle has been obtained the construct is secured with the answer end cap. Once placed the answer clavicle pin is cut to length. The answer clavicle pin set comes in a sterilized pouch in only one size. The procedure-specific instruments are all available in only a half tray which reduces clutter in the ore, reduces storage space and saves on sterilization costs. The 4.0mm answer drill bit is used to open the cortex of the posterior conoid process so the answer clavicle pin can be placed into the lateral fragment. The answer drill guide is used as a tissue protector and a guide preventing the skiving of the answer drill bit when opening the cortex. The answer manual pin driver is used to advance the answer clavicle pin by hand. It is helpful in receiving tactile feedback on when adequate fixation of the medial anchor point has been obtained. Also it is used to fine-tune the position of the answer clavicle pin in relation to the answer lateral fixation device before placing the answer end cap. The answer tap is cannulated and used to create a functional thread in the posterior conoid process of the clavicle and facilitates placement of the answer lateral fixation device. The answer lateral fixation device inserter is cannulated and used to advance the answer lateral fixation device into the cortex of the posterior conoid process. It does not capture the answer lateral fixation device so be careful it does not fall out. The answer end cap inserter is cannulated and used to place the answer end cap over the resilient legs of the answer lateral fixation device. The side with the ring and holes is placed into the answer end cap inserter first otherwise it will not clear the resilient legs nor secure the construct. It does not capture the answer end cap so be careful it does not fall out. Thank you for being with us today. I hope you get the chance to use the answer clavicle pin in the future. If you have any questions, please visit our website.